Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Wow. What a night this is. Okay. Hello. So good to see all of you, although, as the chief said, this is a, a blinding light. Chief Justice, that was a wonderful oath. Thank you for saying like short, like just a few words at a time. That was, you, you are perfect at that, so thank you. Chief Justice, Justices of the Supreme Court, distinguished guests, members of the bench and bar, section chairs and officers, county bar, presidents and officers, friends and family. I am deeply grateful and honored to be your president of the New Jersey State Bar Association. Time is our most precious commodity, and I very much appreciate your spending time here with me tonight and for attending this amazing convention. Before we begin, I would like to thank my incredible niece, who I want to sign up for American Idol, Cassandra Cantella. That was fabulous. You made me cry in the warm-ups. Um, really incredible. Jeff Fiorello, where are you, Jeff? Wow, Jeff. It was so good. Thank you so much for that. Just beautiful. And of course, my beautiful daughter, Abigail, for that invocation. Thank you. I also want to take this opportunity to recognize the members of our military law and veterans, veterans affairs section and ask that they stand and be acknowledged. Thank you. We thank you. We all thank you for your brave and incredible service to our country and so are so appreciative of you being here tonight and for arranging that color guard. I knew very early on in my life that I wanted to be a lawyer. I hope my three kids want to be lawyers. They already think they're signed up for law school. I say mom signed you up for basketball, soccer, and law school. They don't have to be a divorce lawyer like me, but what a gift it is to have this degree. My passion for the law developed from my talking to the best and brightest person on the planet, my dad. Okay. My dad is a retired police officer, a detective, who talked law with me since I was a kid. The love and admiration I have for him has no bounds. Only equal to him is my mom, a tough, strong, warm woman who has picked me up when I have fallen, caring for me and my kids with incredible devo devotion. I take to heart her advice to always be yourself, have fun, and smile. Tonight is the greatest moment of my professional career, and to have my parents and so much of my family here is an incredible blessing. I would never, ever be standing here without their love and support. My incredible kids, Abigail, Lawson, and Amelia, and my fabulous stepkids, Kyle and Carson, are Bar Association babies who have allowed me to share my love for this association and my love for the law with them. The future is so bright for each and every one of them. I love you all very much, and you make me very proud. My husband, John, is great. He has no idea what I do. <laughs> and every time I say I will be home late because I have a bar event, he laughs and says, oh yeah, Jer, another party. <laughs> his greatest gift to me is he lets me be me and do my thing while he does his. I am thankful for his love, loyalty, and his support. Just to give you a little insight in John, this past weekend we had seven basketball games and I said, um, I gotta find some time to work on my speech. And he goes, you have to make a speech? I said, yeah, I gotta make a speech. He goes, oh, don't bore us half to death. <laughs> How am I doing? <laughs> my sister's here, my two brothers are here my families, my nieces, my nephews, my aunt, my uncle, my cousins. I am a very lucky girl. I thank you all for coming and being here. 
I am so thankful for my career, which in large part is due to the relationships I have developed to this Bar Association. To all of you here that I have met at a mid-year meeting, at the Law Center, at, the, at a family law retreat, at the nightclub, premier nightclub, <laughs> after this. Um, I am a better lawyer because of our relationships. I have developed many deep and rewarding relationships through the bar. My service started in the family law section. What an amazing section that is. Its motto, work hard, play hard, serves me and them well. This is an especially exciting night for the family law section as Tim McGoffrin, another family law practitioner, is now our president-elect. Where's Timmy? There he is. Please. After law school, I clerked in Essex County for Judge Glickman and then began working at, at the biggest firm in Somerset County, and I was there for 21 years until my team started Lawrence Law. I can't say enough good things about my work family and those I am surrounded by each and every day. Smart, funny, hardworking, loyal, simply amazing people. They are such an integral part of my village and I thank my lucky stars for them every day. I love and appreciate them immensely. My entire firm is here to enjoy this celebration and I thank them for their support. Thank you to Amy Shamala for her mentorship over the course of my career, her love, and her support. And of course, being a fabulous MC tonight. <laughs> I thank the many staff and lawyers at Norris McLaughlin who raised me as a 26-year-old baby lawyer and taught me a tremendous amount about life and the law over the course of many years. I graduated Wayne Hills High School, and many of my best friends are here tonight celebrating. They are a very shy bunch. I thank them for coming. I graduated Kane College, and some of my college best friends are here tonight, and I thank them for coming. Thank you. I'm a very proud Seton Hall Law grad, and I thank my fellow classmates and alumni for being here tonight. <laughs> to an amazing executive committee and leadership staff at the NJSBA, Dominic, Timmy, Bill, Christine, Norberto, Kim, Glenn, Angela, Sharon, Kate, Bob, Lisa, Denise, and the rest of the team, you are all just awesome. Ridiculously smart and talented, but more importantly, really good people. I learned so much from each of you and know we will continue the hard work of the officers that have come before us. I am grateful to be on this journey with you. Dominic, you have raised an incredibly high bar even higher. Your energy and passion as you led this organization was awe-inspiring. You did a fabulous job, and we all benefited from your wisdom and steady hand. Where's Dom? It's also, Dom's, I think, speech is going to be longer than mine. That's going to be something I, I, that I miss. That, oh, Dom. <laughs> Dom. No, but mine's going to be shorter than Dom's. I thank the Presidential Planning Committee, 17 of my closest bar junkies that have helped me plan for this year. As I begin this journey, I am mindful of those women who have come before me. I am proud to be the 10th woman to serve as your president. That place in history is fortuitous, as that was the number I wore on practically every sports team I ever played, from childhood to college. It's my lucky number, and it's a sign to me that I am in the right place at the right time and I vow to bring my team ethic to my work on behalf of the members. I also thank Pele and my dad who used to take me to the Cosmos game. That's why I like number 10. <laughs> Remember that? Thank you all for indulging me and allowing me to thank you and everyone who has played a part in my standing before you tonight. 
I respectfully urge each of you to consider taking time out of your busy day today to thank those who support you in your life and your career. It is impossible to manage all of this alone. I love being a lawyer. I am grateful every day for my education and law degree. After my clerkship, I joined the State Bar Association and it was one of the best professional decisions I have ever made. Being part of the NJSBA has allowed me to continue to grow, keep learning new skills, and find new ways to help people. Indeed, it was seeing the power of the NJSBA in action as chair of the family law section in shaping alimony laws that inspired me to want to be the president of this organization. The ability to advocate and to bring about change is infectious. The power to identify issues within the practice, to work collaboratively with, stake with stakeholders, and to present real solutions that are then acted upon and results achieved is incredibly rewarding. I thoroughly enjoy being part of a team that works hard to address issues that affect our lives. And that is why we will spend the year ahead putting lawyers first. Ours is a hard and demanding profession. We have all read the statistics about the incredible number of attorneys who are depressed and anxious, and too many of us have friends and colleagues who face these very real challenges every day. We must ask ourselves, why are 46% of lawyers depressed, 61% anxious, while 63% never get any treatment? What is causing us such stress and distress? Desmond Tutu once said, we need to stop just pulling people out of the river. We need to go upstream and find out why they are falling in. Our challenge this year will be to do just that, to look upstream and find out why we are falling into the river. What is the cause or the root of our stress? When I attended the judicial conference this past fall, Chief Justice Rabner spoke of a book where people had grown comfortable living in an old, neglected house. If there was a leak in the roof, a bucket was placed under it, or if there was a creaky floor, it was just stepped over. The chief challenged the attendees to look deeper at the leaks and the creaks and to be open to the possibility of change. I would ask the same when we look to areas that are making lawyers fall into the river of despair. We know that the evolution of the business and practice of law and the ever increasing demands from our clients will not slow down. Ethics grievances and investigations, fee arbitrations, malpractice claims, not being paid in cases, not being relieved as counsel, dealing with negative, false, and defamatory online reviews, these issues and others are the reasons why lawyers are falling in. And that's where putting lawyers first comes in. Putting lawyers first is an intentional name. Lawyers hardly ever, if ever, put themselves first. The court comes first, the client comes first, their firm comes first, their family comes first, but never us. We need to make sure we are also looking out for ourselves. While that may be difficult for us to do as we raise our families, run our practices, and lead our lives, this is exactly the kind of mission we can embrace on behalf of the profession. I am proud to announce the formation of an ad hoc committee whose goal will be to make our life in the profession better and to provide the tools we need to survive and thrive in the ever-changing legal landscape. There are many issues to examine. What can we do to ensure attorneys who are knowledgeable and specialize in the area of law that is at issue are on the very same committees that are evaluating attorneys when they are facing an ethics grievance, a fee dispute, or a malpractice claim. We need attorneys who can bring their real life practice experience to provide meaningful assistance and guidance to resolving these disputes. We need attorneys to volunteer for these very important committees. Our ethics system was instituted to help protect the public, and that should be its focus. 
But when ethics cases last for years and cases are brought sua sponte years or even a decade after the alleged grievance, I suggest that we have lost our way. There is good and bad in every profession and ours is not immune, but we cannot allow the bad deeds of the few to impact our entire profession. How can we allow best practices to exist in our cases, but ethics cases can go on without a reasonable end? Should there be a statute of limitations for when a grievance could be filed? Should there be a time frame within which these cases must be completely disposed of or dismissed? Because every single second of every single day that an ethics case is pending, that ethics case is on the lawyer's mind causing strife and stress. It is a black cloud permeating their entire life. How can we help attorneys who find themselves never being able to turn off work because technology has made it so easy to communicate such that everyone expects instant replies? We have become a profession of instant messaging. The pace of this practice is not sustainable and we need to find ways to create healthy boundaries. This is part of why I love virtual proceedings. Not everything has to be virtual, but I do like some virtual. <laughs> Not only have they provided significant, meaningful access to the court for our clients, but they are also extremely efficient and can ease a lot of stress that we face in trying to be many places at the same time, as well as allowing us to manage our inboxes and our office instead of our precious time being spent on unnecessary waiting and travel. How can we help attorneys thrive in the evolving virtual marketplace where clients can leave false online reviews that have a significant impact on our reputations or a competitor can purchase our name to intentionally redirect potential clients to their website? We need to review the law surrounding how lawyers can be more easily relieved as counsel when they ask to do so, as well as ways we can ensure lawyers are paid for their services that have been contracted to provide and have been provided. We know there is more to be done. We need to be open to real, meaningful change. We are always under enormous pressure and always will be but it will help for the profession to take our needs seriously and find ways to make this practice better. The NJSBA is here to help chart the course forward and the Putting Lawyers First Task Force will help do just that. When we mobilize and put our weight behind a challenge, we can be an impressive force. There is much work to do and it is my privilege and pleasure to do it. I am proud to do this work alongside all of you. On behalf of the entire executive committee, the board of trustees and leadership staff, we thank you for coming tonight, for your friendship and support. We promise to work hard, play hard, make you proud, and be champions for putting lawyers first. Thank you.